Welcome to Sojourns and to this special Sojourns video presentation. While the global COVID-19 pandemic continues, we want to remind you of the daily darshan and blessing and meditation that is broadcast live from Germany of the saintly presence known as Mother Mira. In addition to her regular meditation for world peace and good health, since early 2020, when the pandemic began, she has spent about an hour, seven days a week in total silence and meditation with those who are familiar with her as well as with those who aren't. You can find her daily at 1 p.m. New York City time or 10 a.m. California time at mothermira.com. Once you're at her website, just click on either the YouTube or live stream tabs and then follow the prompts to receive her blessing and to meditate with her. For many, this is the most peaceful and calming period of their day. And during these daily segments, Mother Mira never speaks a word, but she ends every broadcast with this message. And for those unfamiliar with Mother Mira, here is our rebroadcast of a very popular Sojourn's video documentary about her life and her mission. Welcome to Sojourns and to the spiritually transformative work of Mother Mira. After decades of public silence, Mother Mira is now publicly speaking. How it's possible to develop, develop gratitude? It comes automatically. You can't develop only gratitude and the thank you. It's, these feelings comes within ourselves. What we are doing on the daytime to express our feeling, our gratitude, our devotion, it comes automatically. In this second Sojourns video on Mother Mirror, produced in January of 2018, A New Treasure, after decades of mostly public silence, we finally hear her speak. And we also hear from those who work with and others who follow Mother Mirror. Uh, like I feel like my path with her has been more about surrender. So in that sense, I can't say for sure exactly how much I've changed. I mean, I know I've had a lot of experiences, but it's like, I feel like, I have developed more, I guess, faith in surrendering. And so it's interesting to see like how deep the surrender goes. Like, can you really believe that in some situation when you're not in the ashram, when something is happening to you that you're not really uh, thinking that you want to happen, that this is really also mother working on you. So to develop that kind of faith that, you know, this is all mother working on you, I think that has increased. Not that I'm like, you know, completely finished or anything, but I, I can see more, that mother is in working in my life. Tell me how long you've known a mother Mira and tell me what prompted this first trip in person to see her. Uh, probably 10 years I've known of her. And when my friends said they were going, I said, huh, I'm coming, it was meant to be. And they're here working, they're dear souls. So it's just great. So who exactly is mother Mira? Born in India, Mother Mira, an avatar, lives today in Germany. Nearly 60, she is said to be an incarnation of the Divine, a Divine Mother. Mother Mira has no interest in conversion or in changing anyone's beliefs. She is not a guru who takes disciples. Rather, she is simply a Divine Mother for everyone who turns to her. Pray to any form of the Divine, she says, Prayers should come from one soul and heart, and all sincere prayers to the Divine will reach to her. This is her personal affirmation to everyone. The soul's sincere cry is heard and answered, and all pure inner openings to God are openings to her and to her light. Her purpose here? She has come to prepare and cleanse world consciousness, to make it ready for transformation to a higher level of evolution. 
To ensure this development, she calls down the light of the Supreme Consciousness. In her work of darshan, of being in the presence of other men, women, and children, she prepares humanity to become open to this light, so that the divine life and will can become manifested on earth. Mother Mira suggests that on the spiritual path there is no competition. We are all the same. No, I mean, for God, we are all, all children. It is not necessary to believe in me. If you are sincere to your Guru, Master, God, Absolute, or to the Divine, it is enough, and I will strengthen your faith. If you need me, I will help you, whatever path you may follow. For me, there is no difference. All paths lead to the same goal, that is, to realize the Divine. But surrender attitude is always uh, good to have. If to get uh, harmony, or in the family, or in the office, or wherever it may be, surrender, acceptance is easy, but sometimes it is not easy to, to surrender, but it takes time. To achieve realization, a dying to the old self, the ego, is necessary. But why be sad about it? What has the old self given you that you should love it so? The divine self will give you all things and also give you bliss. Do not think in terms of giving up anything. Think in terms of growing. Think of always growing stronger and more loving and more complete. Then. What you wanted yesterday, you will not want today. To escape uh, from the emotions. Yeah, not to pay much attention. Uh -huh. Not mm -hmm. to think about emotion uh -huh. and what happened. To think to something else. Yeah. No, it depends how we are taking the situation. Yes. Sometimes a little thing we will make big, big and sometimes easy to divert our mind and our thoughts and then go somewhere else. <laughs> yes. How can I uh, escape from them when I let them go? No, nothing. I mean, it comes and goes. No, you can't... Uh, the attachment we can't uh, stop. No, it is... It comes and goes. We don't have any special plan to stop or to... So, this, this comes automatically. Once Mother was asked, I am curious about the soul, Mother Mira. Are you able to see a person's soul? Yes. What does it look like? It is a combination of light and shadow, resting inside your body, like another body. Can you really help people become enlightened? Yes, Mother replied with a smile. But first, you must be ripe. She would like to ask you to, to know from you if you are still in contact with the sweet mare and Sri we, we all are or contact each other, that is okay, whoever it may be. We are, we are all together, but most physically we don't come together, but uh, all gurus are avatara somewhere. We yeah. are all connected, but most physically we don't come to to one place or one. We're not like talking to each other. Most physically. Yeah. On the subtle levels. The subtle way everybody is connected. connected. When asked about Sri Satya Sai Baba in our first Mother Mira video, she told me directly, Sai Baba is God. And now that she is talking publicly, she continues to say Sai Baba is an avatar, the incarnation of divinity. I feel a lot 
Manchal Lord Sai Baba said, Nein, with that help, they don't believe, but they say, Sai, I hear your voice or something. So inner voice. Inner voice. Also beide, auch äh, der Schild, Schild und Sadhya. Ja, das Could you describe the relation of your mind to that of the devotee? When the devotee has doubts, I give light to the mind to see things clearly. This is an ordinary and simple thing for me to do. It is not that I read his or her mind, but when something is not clear, I will make it clearer. How best can we follow your inner teachings? When you become aware that there is something you need to understand, ask me inwardly. Quite simply, with love and surrender, and I will teach it to you. Four years after I visited you last in Madhnapali, how do you account for the fact that you've been willing to give up so much of the world to be on this spiritual path? Um, well, it's one of those things like, you know, after you start to have like a spiritual experience, like I feel like you're not really giving it up because I feel like uh, once you start to see like what you can, what kind of joy is possible, that kind of joy I could never get in my real life. Like if I, if I rated things on like a scale of one to ten and I say something like Bill Gates is like a ten or like, you know, like Tom Cruise or someone is like a ten. And I could only achieve like a seven in my life compared yeah. to that. But then through like meditation and spirituality, you can reach something like 10,000. And then so all of a sudden, what you thought was 10 before becomes like a zero. So in that sense, I don't feel like I'm really giving up something. I, I'm just, instead of focusing on 10, I'm focusing on something bigger than that. A question to mother. At death, do I have free will to reincarnate? Or may I choose to merge with God. You, when you are going to die, that at that moment it depends. If you want to come, your strong wish is to come again here, or you want to join in the in the God or in the Paramatman or whatever it may be. It depends on that moment. You want to come or not. But if time comes, he will come so or so. No? Yeah. We can't say this is the last incarnation or we can say we, we are coming and again and again. And depends when, what is your wish on the last moment, you want to come back again here or you want to join with, uh, with light or whatever it may be, we want to join with your Guru, we want to emerge with Guru. It depends on that moment. When in the last moment, falsche Entscheidung. Yeah. It's only it's why you click right now. You want to join with, you want to emerge in with God, or you want to come back again here. That only the two things. No? So nothing is bad to come back here is okay to go and join is okay both are uh, is uh, good and you can't choose between something you don't know I mean you can't choose also in the book Mother of the Unseen World it is said that Mother Mira has been visited since the age of three by different lights lights that became her teachers. Like electricity, light is everywhere, but one must know how to activate it. I have come for that. I am looking at everything within you to see where I can help. At the same time, 
I am giving light to every part of your being. I am opening every part of yourself to the light. When you are open, you will feel and see this clearly. Mother Mira offers her darshan around the world. It is the model of simplicity and unhurried love. I've been looking forward to this and this is the energy, quite frankly, you can just feel the energy in the space before you even get up there and just the, I, it's beyond words. It's just the beauty and the gentleness and the simplicity. Yeah, I mean, that's the hard part of like trying to explain these things because it's hard to really put it into words. Because like, like what I was saying, like when you, when you use words, you can only say like love, joy, happiness, but you can't really give like a real number. So that's why I'm trying to say like, you know, instead of one to 10, it's like 10,000. So I'm trying to give you an idea of uh, the range of a human emotion is actually pretty small compared to what you can really experience. Mm -hmm. And how far does the love of Mother Mira extend? One, one family, if one is connected with the Guru or with the Divine, that, that means the, the, the benefit the, the seven generations will get. <laughs> and only seven, seven generations backwards or yeah. also forward? For and I meet so many. Before coming here, I knew who I was. I knew that I would incarnate and what my work would be. In silence, more work can be done. The true experience of bliss is without words. God is silent. Everything comes out of silence. There are frequent opportunities around the world to spend time in person with Mother Mira or to volunteer to work at her schools in Madhanapali, India, or to receive her light and to maybe even one day see her in the light as Vashanti has. When I came this time to Madhanapali, the third day I was in the Darshan Hall praying and looking at her. Suddenly I could see the light, Amma's the light, the halo around her, and it just enlarged. It was so bright, I just can't express the feeling. Then soon after the Darshan was over, I ran to her. I did pranams and she blessed me. And you are the fourth person to have this vision and appearance, she said. For those new to Mother Mira, know that her darshan is always in complete silence, usually inside a bare room. No prayers, chants, incense, icons, no rituals of any kind, never a spoken message, no lesson, no rules, only silence. Only Mother Mira's touch, her gaze, light, an untying of knots, a practice shared earlier by another. In my experience, there's a connection between Mother Mira and Mary, the mother of Jesus. You're nodding. For example, Mother Mira in one of her books said that she unties the knots. And Mary, the mother of Jesus, in the Middle Ages, there are portraits of her paintings of her by certain artists and she's called the entire of knots. She also said that Mary the mother of Jesus, yes she was an avatar, perhaps that, that yes she was an avatar and she herself is an avatar, the divine mother. Is there a difference? 
Um, I mean, there's a difference in the sense that they have a form, and so they may have a different personality. So in that sense, there's a difference. But I, I think in the, in the end, the source is the same. And I think as divine mothers, they kind of they have a similar way of doing things. So there may be some differences, but I, not huge differences. But I mean, as the form, there's a difference. Yeah. Repeating, the source is the same. The source, as in God. I don't think somebody don't believe in God. Everybody believes, but they don't know which God or something. But everybody believes something. God is like a person. The God is like a nothing. It depends which way you are thinking about God. The whole purpose of my work, Mother Mira says, is in the calling down of the Paramatman light of God and in helping people to open their hearts to the light. That's the reason behind her traveling the world, offering her darshan in silence. She does this to help people to surrender to the divine and to be faithful and sincere to their religion or to their belief, whatever it may be. How many ways does she explain her work? It is to help others to be happy, peaceful, contented, harmonious, and loving. And all the more so when others are in need. Yes, uh, I went to Boone. And then I was going back home, and then on the way home, you know, there's no real specific reason, but I just start like bawling. I'm just like in tears. All these emotions come up, and it's like, you know, not even like, you know, emotions from like one to ten. It's kind of like these really extreme emotions, anger, frustration, longing. And then as this is going on, uh, my phone rings and I get a message, why haven't you called mother yet? as this is happening. And then so I basically talk with her and she says uh, that I should come to the next city. So I mean, that's the thing like with mother, like she directly knows how you're feeling. She directly, you don't have to tell her anything. She just knows.